can I factor this numerator? No, it's not a difference of square situation, and so I can't factor it. We leave this as a final answer. That is going to be your biggest challenge, figuring out, can I factor this or do I leave it alone? Okay, always ask yourself that at the end of each question. So this is kind of basically it's the same steps over and over again. You're always asking yourself, what is this particular rational expression missing to match the common denominator? And you go ahead and multiply. There's nothing more complicated than that. However, there is another concept that's going to, that we're going to visit in this unit guide, and it's called linear inequalities. So please, can you copy this down? So linear inequalities are used when there are an infinite number of values that are part of the solution. In other words, there is a range of values, uh, range of values that I'm looking for as part of my answer. And because I always love to give you a set of rules or instructions to help you solve each new concept, basically the same rules apply as solving simple linear algebraic expressions. So this is not a difficult concept. You always put your variables on one side, your numbers or constant values on the other side, and you use inverse operations to solve. So a key factor with linear inequalities are, and this is some, a concept you might have got, been confused about in grade 9, the less than sign or the greater than sign. The less than sign always looks like that. Uh, less than or equal to has a little dash underneath it. Greater than sign always points to the right. Greater than and equal to has a little dash in it. Now there's something I should have mentioned to you in grade 10, I think, but whenever we're talking about in between, remember when we did domain and range in grade 10, and I said the x values are in between, or the y values are in between a certain range, where the smaller number is over here, and the larger number is over here, this symbol, and you have to always make sure you're writing it in the proper direction. In grade 10, so many times kids would mix it up. This means in between. So if you just memorize what in between looks like, then you'll be able to solve this. In between. When you do your linear inequalities questions, it's going to be very simple because it's simple algebra, but you have to remember to draw the matching diagram. I'm going to show you how to do that, but do not forget to do that on the test because for some reason people always forget and you lose one or two marks every time you miss out on a diagram and those are easy marks so you do not want to lose that opportunity. Okay, a little bit blurry, but that's 7 times negative 3 minus 2x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 12. So if we are applying the distributive property, we have 7 multiplied by the first term, negative 3, plus 7 multiplied by my second term, negative 2x, plus 5 is greater than or equal to 12. That's basically the first step because we're applying the distributive property just like we would do in an algebraic expression. Can someone tell me what is 7 times negative 3? Austin. Negative 21. Jude, what is 7 times negative 2x? Good. Negative 14x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 12. Now, just like algebraic expressions, I want all the variables on one side and all the numbers on the other side. So I'm going to highlight all my constant whole numbers. Those are all my numbers. So I know on the left-hand side, negative uh, 14x is the only variable that I have. 
that's going to be greater than or equal to positive 12. When the negative 21 moves over to the other side, it becomes positive 21. And when the positive 5 moves to the other side, it becomes negative 5. So I have negative 14x is greater than or equal to. Can someone tell me what 12 plus 21 minus 5 simplifies to? 28. Very good. Okay. So the next rule is very, 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 very important. Okay? You cannot mix this up. The only time that a greater than sign or a sign changes direction, so we move from the greater than or equal to to less than or equal to. The only time this happens is when we are dividing both sides by a negative number. So let's write that rule down, okay? Um, we change inequality sign only, there's only one situation, only when you have to divide both sides, both sides by a negative number. If you do not write this down, you will forget it. Why am I dividing both sides by a negative number? Can someone tell me? Why am I doing that? What am I trying to solve for? X. So in order to isolate the X, I need to get rid of the negative 14. That requires dividing both sides by negative 14. So my final answer is X is going to be less than or equal to 28 divided by negative 14 is going to give me negative 2. Okay, so only time the sign changes is because we are dividing by this negative number. Now, when you have to do this on a test, do not forget that you have to graph this solution. It's not a complicated graph. All I have to do is draw my number line. I'm going to draw right negative 2 here. So if x is less than or equal to negative 2, am I drawing an arrow this way or pointing to the right? Pointing to the left or pointing to the right? What do you think? Less than. Pointing to the left. This little arrow is pointing to the left. That means less than. So I have a circle around the negative 2 and an arrow pointing that way. Because the solution is all numbers less than negative 2. X is all numbers less than negative 2. Now, I've drawn an open circle around the negative 2. Is that correct? No, because this is X is less than and equal to negative 2. So that means I have to color in my circle. Because the negative 2 is included in my solution. If you do not color in your circle, your answer will be incorrect. And the only time you color in your circle is when you have this little dash underneath your inequality sign. Let's do one more example to really drive this uh, concept home, but otherwise it seems like a simple oops, question. So this involves some fractions. There is a concept that we learn together because I know how much you guys don't like fractions. So I taught you how to get rid of fractions. 4, 3, and 6 have a number in common. What is that number, the lowest common factor? 12. Good. So to get rid of the, the fractions in this problem, we are going to first multiply every single term by 12. So I'm going to multiply the, oops, the first term by 12, the second term by 12, 
and this third term by 12. And what I'm going to do is 